Mikael Bridges has been doubted his whole entire life. He went from a college redshirt to riding the bench in the NBA, and now he looks like a superstar on the Brooklyn Nets. This is how Mikael Bridges beat the odds. In Mikel's freshman year in high school, he had some major doubt. He was going into a new environment, private school, and he really wanted to make JV as a freshman. But Mikel didn't get an invite from the coaches, so he was forced to play on the freshman team. Mikel didn't understand why he was on the freshman team. He said on a podcast later in life, I thought I was better than those players who were ahead of me. After his freshman year in high school was over, he would transfer to Great Valley High School and Mikel began taking basketball very seriously. He also had a major growth spurt and grew to 6'6". Six six. After Mikel's sophomore year was over, this is where things started getting really interesting. He averaged 20 points and 8 rebounds and got his first college scholarship to a smaller school. Mikel was one of the best players in his class. In his senior season, he had another great year and was ranked the 82nd best player by ESPN. After finishing up high school, Mikel would choose to commit to Villanova and stay in his hometown, Philadelphia. In his first year at Villanova, Mikel was red-shirted. This means he was with the team, but he didn't play. This upset Mikel, but he knew this would benefit him in the long run. He had just turned 18 that summer and was still super skinny. Coaches from Villanova thought he would get physically overpowered if he played college ball that year. During that year with Villanova, Mikel reconstructed his three-point jumper. Every day at practice, Mikel was doing shooting drills for hours. He also got into the weight room and added some much needed muscle. In his first year where he actually played, Mikel would come off the bench. He struggled his first couple of games in college and couldn't hit a three to save his life. Mikel would fight through these struggles and started to find his groove. That season, Villanova would end up winning the NCAA championship and Mikel was a key player off the bench. In Mikel's sophomore season, he was supposed to come off the bench once again, but Phil Booth would suffer a knee injury. Mikel would be then thrown into the starting lineup. This was Mikel's moment, and he wasn't going to disappoint the fans or the coaches. That year, Mikel played super well. His defense was better than ever, and his offensive game took a small jump. He had become the perfect D in three wing, and this was exactly what Villanova wanted. In his junior year, he went from a 3 and D wing to one of the best small forwards in college. He even won the Julius Irving Award. He finished the season averaging 18 points and shot 40% from 3. Villanova won another title and Mikel was the second leading scorer on that team. After college, he declared for the NBA draft. Mikel was drafted by the Philadelphia 76ers with a 10th overall pick. This was a dream come true. Not only was he fulfilling his life on goal and making it to the NBA, but he was also getting drafted by the city he was born and raised in. His mom worked at the arena and he was crying tears of joy. But then everything changed. Mikel was traded to the Suns and Mikel learned that day that the NBA is a business. In his first 26 games or so, Mikel was coming off the bench. But he was just too good on defense and the Suns were forced to play him more and more. On offense, he didn't do much. He usually just sat at the three-point line waiting for someone to kick it out and he would then knock down the open three. Next year, Mikel showed a little bit improvement, but nothing too crazy. He just got a little more efficient. However, in the bubble, he showed signs of creating his own shot one day. His defense was a big factor in the playoffs and the Suns were able to make it to the finals that year. Again next year, Mikel took another small jump. In the playoffs, the Suns would get spanked by the Dallas Mavericks. This would lead to an offseason full of torture for Mikel. There was some major drama in the Brooklyn Nets front office. Both Kyrie and Kevin Durant wanted out of Brooklyn. With Kevin Durant on the trade block, the Suns would get involved. This would mean Mikel's name was thrown into the mix as a potential piece that could be part of the Kevin Durant trade. That offseason was just awful for Mikel. But somehow, the Nets were able to fix both Kevin Durant and Kyrie's relationship with the team. Mikel had no idea if he was going to be on the team to start the season. He was constantly being put into trade rumors. But nothing happened and he was still on the team. Earlier on in the season, Devin Booker would get a hamstring injury and miss a lot of games. Someone on the Suns had to fill in D-Book scoring, and that person was Mikel. Mikel looked really good as the second option and was dropping 20 points a game like it was nothing. He looked like he could be the third option on a championship team. But the drama in Brooklyn was heating up once again. Kyrie was being traded to the Mavs and Kevin Durant was going to be traded soon. Mikel knew his time in Phoenix was running out. This time, the Suns' new head owner couldn't miss out on the opportunity to trade for one of the greatest players of all time. Mikel Bridges and Cam Johnson were traded to the Brooklyn Nets. Mikel was sad that he was leaving his friends and family behind in Phoenix, but he was excited to be in a new environment. Plus, he had a couple friends from college who lived in New York. 
In a later interview, Mikel said, at least I was traded for my favorite player who I watched growing up and not some bum who I didn't think could play. On the Nets, Mikel was the number one option. He was dropping 30, sometimes even 40 points a night. In Mikel's first 11 games as a Brooklyn Net, he was shooting 50% from three and 90% from the line. People were comparing his game to Kevin Durant because he was creating most of his shots from the mid-range and the behind the arc. Mikel was putting the NBA world on notice and showing off all his skills. A lot of people thought the Nets were going to start tanking after making all those trades, but Mikel and the rest of the team weren't having it. They stayed in the playoff mix and had some pretty impressive wins. With Mikel playing super well and the Nets on a roll, fans and analysts were saying Phoenix didn't know what they had with Mikel. But if you had been paying attention, a big reason why the Suns didn't get the deal done in the summer was because they refused to add in Mikel in the potential trade package. Mikel also defended the Suns, saying if he was put into the Suns situation, he would probably make that trade too. In 27 games with the Nets, Mikel averaged 26 points, 5 rebounds with great defense. His defense did take a step back while playing for the Nets, but that made sense because his offensive use rate got so much higher. We have seen this before where other elite defenders like Kawhi Leonard go through the same situation where their defense gets a little worse when they're featured more in the offense. The Nets ended up finishing at the 6th seed and won a total of 45 games. They were going to play the Sixers in the first round of the playoffs. This is crazy to think about, in Mikel's first playoff series as a number one option, he's playing in the city he grew up in and against the team that traded him away on draft night. Mikel did struggle a little bit, being the number one option on a playoff team. In his first game, he dropped 30 points. In the next game, he dropped 21. In the third game, he dropped 26. And in the last game, he dropped only 17 points. All the attention was on slowing down Mikel. He still averaged an impressive 23 points per game, but the Nets couldn't even get one game versus the Sixers. In a post-game interview, Mikel talked about how fun it was playing in front of his hometown. He also said, I still have a lot to learn as a player. Even after Mikel just had his best season ever, he still wants to keep learning and growing as a player. During the offseason, many teams were trying to trade for Mikel Bridges. The Trailblazers offered Anthony Simons and the third overall pick in this year's NBA draft who ended up being Scoot Henderson, but the Brooklyn Nets said no. The Nets just kept turning down offer after offer. Mikel was also getting lots of praise from other NBA stars who were saying Mikel was the real deal. This up and coming NBA season, people are expecting big things from Mikel. Lots of people believe Mikel will become a first time All-Star. Mikel Bridges even said himself one of his goals is to make the All-Star team this year. A sports article said Mikel has the highest chance to become a first time All-Star out of any other player. I think Mikel will make the all-star team with ease. I wouldn't be surprised if he averaged 27 points per game and helped the Brooklyn Nets make the playoffs again. There's a reason why so many players and so many front office love this guy so much. He has an insane work ethic and is such a nice guy to be around.